In this tutorial, we're going to run through the techniques used in this poncho that I'm wearing right now. It's called Arrowhead Poncho and it's from Kramer Yarns. If you'd like to get your copy of the pattern to follow along, just click the little I in the upper right hand corner that will take you to my website. And there you will also have, I'll have a link to the Kramer Yarn website where you can get a look at their yarn Mount Chunky and we use a chunky yarn for this poncho. It is warm and it's pretty quick to knit and this yarn is awesome and it comes in a billion colors. Not quite a billion but I'm going to give you a quick look at the colors because I have the color cards here. And this is a pretty simple pattern. Um, it's really just two rectangles that are seamed together. And I'm gonna run through all the techniques used, including the big chunky cable and working the knits and purl stitches and seaming them together. Um, if you are a confident beginner that knows all the basics and can follow patterns, this is fine for you. Just go ahead and watch the tutorial if you're not sure. But it is a pretty simple pattern. I'm going to show you how to work the trickier parts that you might not have seen before. Two rectangles. Just knit two rectangles. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> the yarn is awesome. It's 100% wool. I'm pretty sure it's 100% wool. Let me double check. I don't want to say that. Um, Well, now I'm not seeing it right off the bat. Oh, it is 100% domestic wool. Yes, it is. I knew that already. Uh, really nice to work with, and because it's the big, thick yarn, it works up pretty quickly. So uh, jump over to my website and get your pattern and order your yarn. And next up, we're going to talk about, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a close-up look at the cable and everything else, and we're going to talk about getting started with this pattern. Okay, I definitely want to give you a close-up of what we're making here because I'm not sure it was super easy to see the awesome puffy big cable. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here it is in purple color with awesome, two big awesome puffy cables. And just in case you still can't see it all that well, here it is. You can see it in person just fine. I'm just not sure how it's translating on camera. But here they are in a lighter color, a bit easier to see. And I didn't mention in the intro, but this poncho comes in two sizes. And if you go to my website, I'll give you more details on the two sizes. I've knit the larger size, and I think um, it's almost one size fits all. But I'm a very tall person, and so the larger size makes more sense for me. And I'll be sure to have pictures and more details on the length and how to measure for it and everything else. So that's the awesomeness of this poncho and the big puffy cables, and I love it. It was so fun to knit, and I love it. So um, the first thing we're going to do is, no, the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the yarn colors. So you saw my purple, and here are a couple more yarn colors that I have of this Mouch Chunky, but I also have the color cards. And the color cards are not the most beautiful way to look at the yarn colors because, of course, you look at the website and all the colors are beautifully photographed and everything. But it's actually a way to touch and feel and see the number of colors. Um, I love color cards. I think they're great. And you can see this is a lot of colors to look at. And when you turn the page, there's actually more on each one. I'm actually, where is the color? I love, oh, here it is it's on this one. I'm actually really excited about this sage color. Isn't that pretty? It's almost multi-tonal. But this is so pretty too, this blueberry ice. Oh, yeah, whatever your heart desires, this yarn has um, probably has the color. And yeah, I'll have the link to all the colors beautifully photographed on my website. So the first thing we do is we're going to swatch. And uh, anytime we're knitting a garment, we always want to swatch, especially if we're knitting a garment from a kit, like we are with this. We want to make sure we have enough yarn. And the pattern gives you instructions for knitting your swatch. You'll cast on the number and knit the number of rows, and you want it to be four by four when you're finished. And that's what I have here. It looks like it shrunk up a tiny bit. No, we're there. Um, I got perfect gauge using the 10.5 needles. I didn't need to go up or down, um, so I consider that a perfectly written pattern if it matches my gauge. 
I, it was just, it's just handy when you don't have to switch anything up. So there's my swatch and there's plenty of yarn. Um, oh, and also I just steamed blocked this because 100% wool. I didn't wet block it, just steam blocking it and it came out flat and beautiful just like this. Um, what was I going to say about 100% wool? That's not what I was going to say. But you have your swatch. Oh, you have plenty of yarn in both sizes to knit your swatch. No problem. People always ask me that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is um, getting your yarn started. <laughs> because people always ask me this too. When you have a skein of yarn like this, you always want to start, uh, if the label is printed this way, you want to pull from the top. If the label is printed this way, you want to pull from the left. And so since this is an up and down label, I want to pull from the top. And I'm just going to root around in there until I feel something that's kind of loose and pull it out. I got a little yarn barf, not a problem. The thing you don't want to happen is like half of the skein comes out, right? And the next thing I want to talk about is casting on a lot of stitches. Because you're going to follow this pattern and um, you're going to cast on the number for the size that you need to knit. And so I have this needle here. I'm going to leave myself like a six inch tail and then start wrapping. And each one of these wraps is enough to cast on one stitch. So usually what I do is I'll, ca I'll wrap half the number of stitches that I need and then double that length. And then that's where I put my slip knot for the long tail cast on. And I know that I'll have enough yarn to work the long tail cast on. So I have a little abbreviated version of the poncho here. And this is a finished abbreviated version of the poncho here. It is, the whole piece is much wider, but I've cut down the numbers of, um, of knit panels just to make it go more quickly. And um, this has not been blocked. The other piece has. Let's go ahead and cut away to a picture of my knitting. I finished my two pieces here and one is blocked, full on wet blocked, and the other is not. And the reason I'm showing you that picture is so that you don't get discouraged if your knitting is all scrunched up and terrible while you're knitting it because it will be beautiful when you finish it. So you will cast on your stitches and work some garter stitch rows and then we get into the actual stitch pattern where we have a garter stitch border on each side and then we have knit panels with a single purl stitch between and then the cables. And if you've never worked cables before, they're pretty great. They look like they're twisted because they actually are. And I'm ready to work a cable row here. So I'm going to knit my garter stitch edge stitches, four of those, and then one purl stitch. And then I'm going to just knit the knits and purl the purls until I get up to my cable. And when I hit the marker, I know I'm in the cable section. So I'm going to purl two stitches. And not every row is a cable row. You just follow the pattern to know how often to do it. So um, I'm going to take a cable needle. Cable needles come in all shapes and sizes. This happens to be my favorite. I think this one's made by Brittany. And I'm going to slide four stitches to the cable needle and hold it in the front of the work and then ignore it. Pretend it's not there. And then knit four stitches. It's kind of making itself known though, isn't it? Getting in the way. <laughs> and now I've knit four stitches. I'm going to go back and knit these stitches from the cable needle, which gives me my twist. Okay, see that? 
See that twist there? Isn't that awesome? And now I'm going to purl two. And this one actually twists the other direction. So I'm going to slip four stitches onto the cable needle and hold it in the back of the work this time. Then knit four from the left needle. And then knit the four stitches from the cable needle. And then purl two and work my four stitches in garter stitch. Look at that. Isn't that great? Okay, there's another thing I want to show you on here. And that's getting good tension between knit and purl stitches. The wrong side of the work for most rows, for every row, is mostly going to be purl stitches because we're on the wrong side of the, of the work. And so I'm going to purl across these stitches that were part of the cable. And they're a little tight because we just, we just twisted those stitches. They won't be so tight on subsequent rows. But here's the technique. When I'm switching from a knit stitch to a purl stitch, like the back of these, this cable, I yarn forward to work the purl stitch. And because of, the, especially the way things are pulling right now, you really want to tighten that stitch up um, so that you have a nice line on the other side of your work. So I always work that purl stitch pull my yarn back and tug on it. And I don't know if you were able to see that, but that just picked up a whole bunch of slack and it's gonna make the front of the work look really good. And because we're on a cable, I'm gonna go ahead and do the next stitch too, on the back of a cable, rather. And now I'm gonna to switch to my knit stitches. And here again, I'm going from knit stitches to purl stitches. So I work the first purl, I'm going to yarn back and tug. And I just got so much extra yarn there. And if you do that every time that you're switching from knit to purl, tug, you end up with a really nice lines of knitting on the front of your work. And like I said, that cable is really helping to want to stretch things out. See so if you can keep good tension, keep good tension on the work, especially with the purl stitches around the cable. It ends up looking just really tidy and nice. Checking my notes here, see what else I wanted to show you. Nope, that's it. That is really it. You're going to knit these two big rectangles and next up we're going to talk about seaming those two big rectangles together. After you've finished knitting your big rectangles, we're ready to seam them together and I'm going to use paper to demonstrate. I like it when I get to use paper to demonstrate how to do knitting things. Let's take a look. There is a diagram in the pattern um, for seaming these together, and, but I want to show it three-dimensional, and this is how we're going to do it. Um, these, this represents your big pieces, right? And this represents the cable. And because you want the cables to be up around your face, I mean, you can choose to have the cables at the bottom of the, of the poncho. I like the cables up around my face. So you have this piece here. You're going to seam this piece, the side, the short side to the long side here like this. And this is where the tape comes in, right? Oh no, it's a brand new roll of tape. We don't want that green piece on there, okay. 
so that side to that side. I'm usually better with paper crafts than this. And then um, we want to sew th this short side to this long side. And that's going to look like Let me straighten this out. That's going to look like this. Let me show you that again. This short side to this long side. Boom. More tape, please. I'm usually really precise with paper crafts, so this, this tape line is not making me happy. So when you're done, you end up with something that looks like this. You have the cables right up next to your face. Like I said, you can do it the other way. And it's exactly the same on both sides. That's what it looks like three-dimensional. And here's the piece that we have. We want it this way. And here's this piece. We want it this way. This one obviously isn't finished yet. But this is how, um, and these are not, exactly perfectly proportioned but it does uh, I can demonstrate on this so we're ready to seam these together and if you take a look at the gauge we have 14 stitch let me get this just right here I want to get this just right I don't want no I have it right here in my notes I don't the pattern is 14 stitches and 18 rows over 4 inches. So we have more rows than we have stitches. That makes 3.5 stitches to 4.5 rows or um, 7 stitches to 9 rows. So it's not exactly going to be one for one. So 7 stitches to 9 rows, um, you can pick up uh, every row and then skip two stitches out of every nine, right, over here. This is, that is if your gauge is perfect, okay? You can do all the math in the world, but unless your row and stitch gauge are perfect, which may or may not be the case, this is how I like to do things. And we're, of course, keeping all of that other stuff in the back of our mind, all of the perfect math, but it doesn't always work out perfectly. Sometimes you have to look at things and gauge them as you go along. So once you get the both pieces wet blocked, they are the, exactly the sizes they need to be, go ahead and pin them out the way you want them to go together. And then you can start seaming. And this is what I did, and I was really happy with my results. This is how I always do it. I have um, my seaming yarn ready to go. The right side is facing me. We're gonna do mattress stitch. I'm going to secure this down here in the corner, leaving myself a tail to weave in. Go through the same stitch twice. And then over here, I wanna pick up a couple of things. Okay. Um, now <clears throat> I'm going to pick up one, two, three, or one, one, two, two, three, three, skip one, four. That's what I'm going to do. And then after every eight stitches or so, I'm going to evaluate and see how things are lining up to see if I want to change anything. So in this case, we're working from a uh, bind off row, or is this the cast on row? This is a cast on row. I'm going to go right below the cast on row, pick up two strands there of V, and then jump over here, go in the same hole I came out of, pick up uh, two strands over here. Really the important thing is, whatever you are doing to get your groove with, with mattress stitch, make sure it, you always pick up the exact line, you're not diving into the fabric further or, or working closer to the edge, because that's what's going to give you a beautiful seam. And at any point, if something doesn't look right, just pick it back out and do it again. It's really easy. I'm going to go in the same hole I came out of and pick up a couple of stitches there. Just go under two stitches there. Go into the same hole I came out of. Pick up a couple of stitches there. So that was three. I have more stitches than rows here. So I need to skip a stitch here 
Don't go into the same hole I came out of. I'm actually going to skip one and then work this one over here. Now that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and give this a tug. Whoops, I just broke the yarn. Where is it catching up? Every now and then this happens where if you split a stitch on the way down, I thought it was going so well. I must have split a stitch on the way down because it's not tightening. <laughs> and I get so excited. The reason that I do it this way is because I love to leave the stitches loose and then pull them and then have it all come together so beautifully. But once every now and then this happens, and when you're working with this roving yarn, but you know me, you know when this stuff happens, I don't say, producer, cut this, we're starting over. Nope, you get to live through it with me. Okay. I seamed the whole, my whole poncho and the yarn didn't break. It was totally my fault. You get to see me do it again. Into the same hole. And now I'm going to skip one over here. Look how quickly I caught back up again. Okay. I could be tightening it every time, <laughs> but I still love this part of it so much. I'm going to tie. I just did it again. Okay. You see how beautiful that seam looks. I can't believe I just did it again. I just broke the yarn. I have a feeling that the beginning of the, the uh, or the very end of the hank here, because I pulled from the other end, isn't quite as twisted as the rest of it. I knit my whole sweater without that, that happening. Um, I seamed the whole poncho without that happening. But I'm looking at this right now, and I only seamed up four stitches here, but so far so good. It's all coming together flat. It looks good. And I'm actually going to pull from the other end here because we can't leave it at that. And I'll tell you, normally I would say split by spit splice that yarn, but I tried spit splicing this yarn. It did not spit splice all that well. but it's super easy to weave in the ends on this yarn. Okay. Two. Three. Three. Okay, I'm gonna skip one over here and do one here. And this time it's not going to break because the yarn is more twisted, it's stronger. And so far it's looking good. My pick up three, skip one um, is working really well. A nice flat seam. I wet blocked both of my pieces before I got to this point of, of seaming them together. And then once the whole thing was seamed together, I just se steam blocked just with an iron. It's a, I turned the iron on full steam and then I didn't press down. I just blew steam into it and patted it out with my hands. And that was all that it needed. It was fine. And so my bit of advice, I pulled from the wrong end of the yarn um, to get the yarn that I needed to seam it up. And the wrong end of the yarn, the first couple feet are not as twisted and that's why I was having the yarn breakage problem. So you can learn from me. I knit this whole thing without the yarn breaking on me once. So that's not a common problem. Um, anyway, I love my poncho. It's really warm and it comes in two sizes and click the little I in the upper right hand corner to go to my website where you can get a link to the pattern and all of the yarns and many thanks to Kramer Yarns for sponsoring this video and giving me the chance to make a poncho that I love. And I hope this helps. Good luck.